Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to make a boxed cushion cover. And before we get started with the video, I just wanted to add this clip in. I did mention this in my previous video, but just in case you haven't watched that, I just wanted to say that most of the videos that I'm going to be posting for the next little while in 2021 are all clips of projects that I made somewhere between July 2020 and December 2020 and I ended up filming a lot of different clips for different projects and not necessarily finishing uh, filming all of the steps for all of the projects properly and because they're all things that I either made for myself and have completed or I made them for custom orders I'm not able to go back and obviously film the parts that I missed so what I've been doing is just trying to go through the clips that I do have from the last six months or so and try to make sense of what I am able to post and any clips that I might be missing I will just have to explain verbally by adding in some extra clips here and there. So the project that I'm going to be showing today is something that I made just as a personal project which rarely happens. I rarely make something just for myself and I made this last summer for my dog and when I was trying to finish it, it was when sort of the pre-Christmas rush was starting and I got really busy and just kind of quickly finished it to get it out of my sewing room and then never bothered to take the time to post the video since YouTube as a part of my business is a tiny, tiny fraction. It actually doesn't really matter the grand scheme of things for what Quilters Workshop means for me. So if you would like to see what I do on a more regular basis or follow the things that I make for custom orders and things like that. I post them most frequently to Instagram. So my Instagram link is listed down below as well as all my other social media links and my email address in case you have any questions and prefer to reach me that way. But I hope you enjoy today's video. I hope it helps a person or two. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters to me. Um, so thank you so much for watching today's video and here are the clips that I have filmed. Hey everybody, so today we're going to share how to make a boxed cushion. Um, specifically this boxed cushion is going to end up being a dog bed actually, um, but you can definitely use it for whatever you want, whether you're going to put this on top of a bench seat or a window seat or something like that. So the piece of foam that I'm using, it's 36 inches square and three inches tall. So I've already cut up my fabric. It's this really gorgeous canvas material. I feel like the color doesn't come up true on camera, but it's sort of really light, like a sea foamy green with these little like, I'm not sure if they're branches or, or pieces of coral, but I really love it. So I've cut my top and bottom pieces 37 inches so an inch bigger than whatever you're going to work with my side pieces i cut four inches wide because the foam was three and i'm going to do half inch seam allowances and i've tried to cut them so that like i know it's a square so it doesn't really matter which way is up necessarily but i would like it obviously to be like the branches pointing upward and we're going to put a zipper in it um ideally the zipper would be the correct length <laughs> but I just had this in my stash um, this is a 60 centimeter or 24 inch zipper and uh, it's one of those sort of plasticky ones like you would maybe put on a fleece jacket or something like that um, and it's beige so <laughs> but we're working with what we have okay so I don't know if I mentioned in the previous clip but I went ahead and sewed the sides on, so on the left side and the right side of this piece. And as you can see, I just made sure that the piece that I cut, the branches are still going the right way. Now for the top and the bottom pieces, um, you're going to want to make sure when you're putting the side pieces on that you stop about your, your seam allowance away from the ends. And then your pieces for the top and the bottom, which I also cut so that my branches would be going the same way, um, you're going to cut those the same as your width. So my dog bed that I'm doing is 37 inches. So all four of my, I guess, side panel pieces are four by uh, 37. Okay, so I have this whole piece 
pinned onto that side, but I just want to show you the corner. So the piece is pinned right to the end of the square, the large piece of it. And I have the side piece just pulled back a bit. Hopefully you can see what I mean. So now that I've laid this new piece on, I'm also going to start a half inch away and just back stitch here so that on the back side, um, it's going to meet up, if that makes sense. Okay, so how I was saying on the flip side, so we just sewed on this edge here and we stopped half an inch before the end. And when you flip it over and you see your first seam and your new seam, they meet up perfectly. So it creates that little square. Now, if you have a serger, uh, serge the edges. I'm just gonna zigzag. I do have a serger, but to be honest, I feel a little too lazy to get it out right now. And I'm unsure of how much I'll really need to wash this. I mean, I will wash it, obviously, but my dog can be a little finicky about things. So first of all, I don't even know if she's going to end up using it. Um, and then the other thing too is she really likes a lot of blankets. So I feel like even though this is going to be the case for the foam, I feel like there's going to be blankets on top of it more often anyway. So the like in my head, I'm imagining that the blankets are going to get washed way more often than the actual cover. Okay, so I finished my edges there. And I've done one corner already just to show you, but basically you're going to just be picking up this side and the next side mm -hmm. and just joining up this seam here and see how it kind of completes that box. Remember we were talking about this box on this side and now this creates the same corner here. So I'll show you a side I haven't done yet. So here is my two pieces just like that and you're literally just going to pick these guys up like this and you're going to just sew down there until you meet your straight stitching and then you can finish the edge in the same way. Okay so I thought that I filmed the part where I put the other large piece on uh, and it appears that I haven't. <laughs> I don't know if I've lost the clip or not but I swear I I did start talking about that, but anyway, so um, I showed in the last clip that I know for sure that I have, I was explaining making the corners like this. So I've gone ahead and zigzagged those corners the same way that I did for the longer edges, and I've put the top on. So as you can see, like here's my top or bottom, and the side panel, and then the opposite side there. So I've done all three sides. You're basically going to attach the back the same way that you attach the front you're going to leave yourself leave yourself that half inch at the corner so that you're able to pick it up and join the next seam along so um, the last side here is going to be where I put my zipper now in a perfect world your zipper would be possibly the whole length of the side of your cushion or whatever you're making but I'm just kind of making this with whatever I have on hand. So my zipper is not quite the length of the dog bed that I'm making. So what I'm going to do first, this whole, this whole side is open right now. I'm going to finish the edges individually to start instead of like sewing it how we did here and then finishing the edge. I'm going to finish this edge and finish this edge. And then what I'll do is sew in as far as I need to. Okay, so this is the final side that I was just talking about. So as you can see, I have the front piece, this side panel, and this is the back piece. And this is my side where I'm going to put the zipper. So I stitched in about that far on both ends, so you can see the same over here, and I finished the ends separately. And then what I did to determine the opening was I literally just laid down how much zipper I had, and then I surpassed it a little bit. And the reason I did that is because this zipper is the kind of zipper that's meant to be undone for a jacket. 
So when I sew this in, I want to make sure that I'm kind of cutting off the last couple of teeth there so that any time that it's opened, I don't accidentally like, whoop, like, you know what I mean? Open it right up. Um, and then the same at the top. I've just made sure that how far I've come in is going to basically line up with the start of the zipper. And I've already ironed these two edges uh, so that the amount that I've ironed over is the same as my seam allowance. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pinned half of the zipper in. I turned the bed right side out, by the way. And I want the fabric to kind of hide the zipper because this zipper is really bulky, like I said at the beginning, and it's not the right color that I would have chosen either. So I've brought the fabric up to about the middle of the teeth, and I'm going to be stitching oops, right about here, like as close to the teeth as I can get. So there's going to be this little lip of material. So whenever you undo the zipper, you'll just have to be careful that your zipper isn't snagging on the fabric, but it won't be very often that you have to do that. So it's okay. And the other thing too, is when you pull this back, you need to make sure that your fabric goes beyond there. So when I folded this down, it's a good size, right? So if I had stitched here and let's say it only tucked under my edge a little bit, your raw edge might be coming up. So this is just going to be a really nice finish because your raw edges are hidden underneath there. So I'm going to do one side at a time. In hindsight, I would have done the zipper differently than this, um, but this is just sort of... I'm going to go ahead and just join this one side on first. And as you get down, if you haven't installed the zipper before, as you get down about to here, you're going to need to put your needle in and lift the the head of the zipper up and past your pressure foot so that you can continue on like far enough down to the end and I'm going to want to make sure that I get to a little bit past where the stitching is here like where my seam starts. Alrighty so I put together all of those clips and um <laughs> I was just going to say that I put together all of those clips a little while ago and uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video I think that I made this boxed cushion cover last summer and then it's been about two weeks since I put all of the clips together explaining how I made it but I noticed that when I was doing that I didn't have a final clip really showing it and uh, showing it after the zipper had been installed and I just wanted to jump on quickly and show that end result um, and I was going to mention that I've had a hard time getting the clip because my dog sits on it every day and <laughs> just when I was about to show it um, she ran over so I've had a hard time getting it at a point where it's been bright enough in the room to show you and when she hasn't been using it but that looks like it's not going to be possible so um, Anyway, this is the finished bed. Like I mentioned, I made this last summer, so she has been using it pretty much every day since. The zipper is actually under here. Maybe we can get her to move. Um, but she loves it. She loves this bed very much. The only thing that um, I would recommend is whichever side is going to be the top, or maybe you can do it for both of the large sides, sides of it. Um, if it's a dog bed, if it's a bench, just do whichever side is going to be the top because one of the sides is obviously always going to be on the bench. Um, but I would have in hindsight put batting. So when I cut this center um, square, the largest piece, I would have also cut a piece of batting and maybe quilted it together before sewing the sides. And the only reason for that is because the fabric that I used is a canvas. And as you can see, when she sits on it, it gets a little bit wrinkled. And so over time, um, the wrinkles sort of stay. So see how over here there's um, some creases in it. Obviously, if you washed it, um, you could press it and then put the cover back on, but that's obviously too high maintenance for a dog bed. And um, to be honest, there's always a blanket over this. So 
have the blanket off right now, but she has a pillow and a blanket. She's such a diva. <laughs> so the pillow and the blanket go on top of this. So this is really just some extra cushion because she's an older gal. So we have um, hardwood floors and ceramic tile all throughout our main floor of our house. And we spend most of the time, especially now that we're working from home, we spend most of the time on the main level together. Um, so this is just really, really gorgeous and comfortable for her to sleep on um, because it's uh, memory foam inside here so anyway yeah it it other than that I would have lined it with the batting just to help it wrinkle less it would just give it a little bit more body and I think especially if you're using it for a cushion seat that will be used often by humans I feel like the batting will also help give it a little bit more durability um, if you're sitting on it a lot with like jeans or rough material that will be rubbing against it um, it will help just help it uh, last a little bit longer but for her like I mentioned she the use on this is very gentle because she rarely sleeps directly on the material like this um, but yeah so um, Amy can you move thank you so here's a look at the zipper here Let me... um, so here's a look at the zipper and I did show it in one of the clips that I do have when I had it pinned, but I just ended up sewing exactly how I explained in the last video. Um, really, I don't find that this is a super important part of the tutorial because you can search a zipper tutorial separate from this, um, and also you don't need to know how to install a zipper because you can make the closure however you'd like. I'm gonna give her her bed back now. 